Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to Way and Eat today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, selfie! Don't be low. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a big boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital, we fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. In charge of resus today is one of St George's most experienced consultants, Will. I remember when I was a student, there was a professor of surgery who was your typical consultant, white coat, name badge, single gold pen. What's the name of Shelfie? What do you like to be called? Shafi. I like to be called Will. Is that all right? See, so when did you start? I just started last week. Okay. He expected a lot from us, but he also gave quite a lot to us. So I'll keep you, I'll keep you here. That's probably the best thing. And just ask me everything. We go to medical school, we learn a lot of our medicine, but becoming a doctor comes from seeing patients, seeing it, experiencing it, doing it. So listen to what's happened to this man. This is the only chance you get to hear what's happened. And not from a book, and not watching somebody else do it. One guy like that, so you either put it back, now it should come. That's really good. You get it much better from doing it yourself. 23-year-old Uzair is a medical student training in emergency medicine. When I first came to the emergency department, coming from Manchester to London, I felt um, quite out of my depth. It was all very new. How do they? Let's find a phone. Oh. None of my family are medics. There's nobody in healthcare in my family. So it does give me a bit of anxiety if I'm going to say something stupid or do something wrong. So that goes in there like that. Yeah. Like that. No, Wait, no, 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 like, that like, around the back like that. Yeah. But the staff are very helpful. They want you to learn because they've been there and they know what it's like. Yep. 
see you in 10 minutes. All right, thanks. An 11-year-old boy is being rushed to A&E after being hit by a motorbike whilst walking to his first day at secondary school. Paediatric trauma, ATA, seven minutes. Yeah, hit by a motorcyclist. He's been transferred from Frimley Park. He was taken to a local hospital, but his injuries are so severe, he's been transferred to St George's. It was a normal day. We'd had breakfast. Jack and his little mate were actually going off to an induction day into the secondary school. They'd been walking to school together for about three, four months. So you, you kind of get used to letting them go. And then I got the phone call. Get down the road, your, your son's been hit by a motorbike. OK, they're here. We've got a child with an isolated head injury who's possibly going to need surgery. His mum and dad travelled from the scene of the accident with the ambulance. I just remember just, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, as I ran down the road, just let him be alive, I think. I just, that was it. Steady, steady, slide. This is 11-year-old Jack, around 7.30 this morning. Jack was hit by a motorcycle going approximately at about 20 to 40 miles per hour. Jack was thrown up into the air and witnessed the back of his head. Uh, Hems came out. They found that he had a basal skull fracture. He was a slow at size 2. He is due to 14, but he has had some amount of morphine. OK. If they've come from a, another hospital, there may be things that you'll pick up that nobody else has picked up. Things may have changed uh, in the time that they've gone from one hospital to the next hospital. Jack, I'm Leela. I'm one of the nurses. Airway patent and trachea central. Breathing right upper chest wall. With trauma patients, we are most concerned until we've made the diagnosis of all the injuries that we've got. Because once you know their full injury load, then you can work out what are the kind of things that are going to bite you and put things in place to ensure that you don't get bitten. Can I just have a look in your eyes, Jack? Jack? There's breathing over the right hip posteriorly and some abrasions there as well. Oh, I, just did, I just felt so helpless, cos I just couldn't do anything for him. You can't imagine what goes through your head when faced with a situation like that. You don't know exactly what is, what is wrong with him. It's going to fill your tummy, Jack, OK? Neurosurgeons are concerned that the fracture in Jack's skull may have caused a bleed in his brain. It's just really difficult to predict how that brain and that patient is going to be able to cope with that injury. The range is complete resolution with no long-term problem to death. Hi, Jack. Dad's here. Daddy's here. The full results of 11-year-old Jack's CT scan have revealed a bleed on his brain caused by the fracture in his skull. Do you know where you are? You're in a hospital, yeah. Neurosurgeons are assessing the scans, but doctors are now concerned that he may have internal bleeding. So we're looking for fluid in that space there. Uh, so I can see the liver edge here and lung. And that's the diaphragm, yeah, very bright. Sometimes when people are injured, their, their most significant injury is invisible. So we're just looking for big problems with that scan, OK, associated with the accident, all right? So keeping an open mind, um, exploring any other potential injuries is really important. He 
He's in the right place. You know? All right? Oh, no. We're going to take really good care of him. Yeah? It's really difficult. We have to try and reassure people with unknowns. You know, we don't know, but we're trying to reassure you to, and say that everything's going to be OK when we don't know if it's going to be OK. They say he's fractured his, actually fractured the skull. Yeah, well. that's very common. Very common. Yeah. And that the fracture of the skull doesn't matter. It's what's happened underneath that's the yeah. important thing. Well, I'm going to give you a hand yeah. to Mum. I think when it's a head injury, because you, you can't see it, you don't know what's happening. Sort of looking at him, and you, you don't know if he's if he's gone or if he's just drifted off. He's crossed that road so many times, though. Well, he's not done anything wrong. But he went right up in the air, apparently. He got knocked up in the air. Jack really loved school and he wanted to be a marine biologist. On the day, he was just so ready to go. He was so excited. Thought, our oh, little boy going off to school, he's all ready for big school. I was looking forward to him going to the school. It's a big step into secondary school. He was just very excited. They're not grown up but they think they are, and they just want to go and, and be independent. we we'll wait and see what the neurosurgeon says. Mm. All right, darling. It's drifting in now, the old warfare. something to get eat. Kebab. <laughs> He's only sent down a picture. Smile. 32-year-old Samil and his brother Rishin have come to A&E after an accident at home. <laughs> He's been assessed in triage, but as part of his placement, medical student Uzair has been asked to examine him. Hello, I'm Uzair. What's, what's happened exactly? So our washing machine packed up. OK. So I just kind of put my hand in. Yeah. It felt like a hot plate, a hot piece. So yeah. I went to take my hand out very fast. Yeah. So my hand kind of went out. It must have caught the metal thing underneath. Ah, uh, OK. And just kind of gashed the top of it off. Was it bleeding lots? Yeah, it kind of made me a bit kind of... <laughs> Do you have a photo of what it looks like? Okay. So it's kind of like when it, so when they changed it. There was a lot of blood. Yeah. Okay, a lot of fresh blood. Um, sorry, I can't. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's fine. So I'll have a look in a second. I'm just going to get something to put it on, just in case. Do you think you should get another doctor with him, or just? What? Because he's junior. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really weird. I can't look at blood on TV or on screens or anything like that. So he but showed. Only he in should... real life. No, but I can look at it in real life. <laughs> oh. I knew he didn't go into medicine because of my dislike of looking at blood on a screen. But in real life, it's completely different. So what does a junior doctor mean? So I'm not a junior doctor. Okay. So I've done four years of medical school. OK. I do get it quite a lot where patients say, oh, you're a young one, or they do uh, get surprised with how young I look. But I think patients understand that you're learning. Uh, did you? Yeah, you oh. did say slowly, did you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Sorry. OK. So it's still like something bleeding. But try and see it from their viewpoint, the fact that they've clearly very worried about something to come to the emergency department. It is quite a big deal in someone's life and it, it can be quite nerve wracking. OK, sorry. There we go. I'll get you the pain relief and I'll go have a chat with the doctor. Is that OK? Yep. The severity of Samil's injury mean he'll need stitches to close the wound. 
My impression is we need to stop the bleeding yeah. <laughs> first, and we need to apply direct pressure for half an hour uh, and keep it elevated. Um, Sounds like a plan. So it's good. If I were you, I'd have a nice cool shower and have a cup of tea and eat, eat some watermelon and watch Wimbledon and uh, go to bed. So I was walking back from Sainsbury's yesterday and there was a glass bottle with tonic water in the bag. It was a big, like, fever tree one and um, the bag split and the bottle exploded and the glass sort of went into the back of my leg. Oh, wow. Eleven-year-old Jack has been brought to X-ray to check for damage to his leg and ankle. He's always been independent because he is an only child. Being parents wasn't part of the plan. I was 25 and Ralph is 32. I did get pregnant, um, but we lost that one. And then we lost another one, unfortunately. And thought, well, that's it, I'm not going to have them. But then eventually got pregnant with Jack. When we did the first scan, I was just prepared for there being no heartbeat. But now he was alive. I was so excited. After all this time, we were going to have a child. It was just perfect, just absolutely perfect, you know, come out all just all his fingers and toes and just little lovely he was. Doctors are still concerned about the bleed on Jack's brain. He's been brought to paediatric A&E where his head injuries can be closely monitored. Jack! Jack! Hello, darling. We're in another department now. Do you remember moving? Specialist nurses need to check Jack's responses every 30 minutes for any sign of deterioration. Yeah? You open your eyes for me. Open, open, open. Wide, wide, wide. Wide, wide. Keep going. Nearly there. Jack? Open, open, open. He's up at uh, St George's at the moment. I don't think his leg's broken, but I think his foot is. He's worn his ankle down to the bone. And he's got a fractured skull. And he's got a bit of a bleed on the brain. The car had stopped to let the kids across the road, and a bike overtook the car and took them out. Jack was thrown onto the other side of the road. But he, he pushed his little mate, his schoolmate, who he was walking with, out the way as well. So, uh, he's a bit of a hero. speaking to a PICU, so it's just a highly monitored area inside the hospital. So what we'll do is we'll hopefully get him up there and get him, get him monitored. Um, it's just a watch and wait. We've always told Jack to be so careful on the roads. And my friend lost his little boy at the age of seven in a road accident. And uh, that accident, uh, burnt its way into my mind and uh, I've always been very worried about Jack. Don't know what's going to happen in the next 24 hours, do we? In all honesty. They don't know what's going to happen, do they? That's why they're monitoring him all the time. Shorts. Do you think that would be acceptable? <laughs> Painkillers, 
because she can have some cardiogram and some anti-inflammatories, um, a crutch, and she can go to orthopaedic clinic tomorrow, French clinic tomorrow. OK, and what, what's the first thing you do? So you check the airway, so you just have it. Uh, what do you do? So you head touch in it, or with him, so if you're worried about trauma. OK, trauma. patient's awake, what do you do? So you ask them to open their mouth. Say hello. Yeah. Say hello. Yeah. Is he talking? Oh, hello. Um, I'm calling, I was wondering if I can refer a patient, please. With a left-hand laceration, he was playing around with the bottom of the washing machine. It cut his hand over metal, and it's, it's still actually bleeding. Medical student Uzair has requested a specialist to stitch Samil's hand after he cut it whilst trying to mend his washing machine. Boy, if it was Dad, <laughs> Dad would have just said, oh, come over here and put some TCP on it. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> OK, that's great. He's in exam 10. I am extremely close with my uh, siblings. I've got uh, an older sister and younger brother. If a patient comes in, sometimes I see my, my sister or my niece or my granddad in the patient. Even though it's not them, they kind of trigger something in me. Hi, so a specialist plastics doctor yeah. will uh, come and have a look. So we'll be back down as soon as they can. Okay. Okay, thank you. Cheers. And I will treat them as if that's how I wanted my my friend or my parent to be treated, that's the same quality of care I'd give them. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name is Nidal. I'm one of the plastic team hand specialist. Is it okay if we watch so the next course, time we don't please. have to call you? Oh, yeah. You can learn. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I've got one, two, three, four, five stitches there. My family have been very supportive, even though they don't understand fully what's involved in the medical field, they are proud every time I pass an exam. My parents tell everybody because they're just, they're just so happy. <laughs> Georges, is it medical trauma? Was he a driver? Oh, OK. okay. Adult male trauma, ETA, 10 minutes. A 24-year-old motorist is being rushed to St George's after a head-on collision with another car. When that red phone goes off, there is an adrenaline rush. Your heart does start beating faster. You are ready, you're more alert. You're, you're, the fight and flight response is there. It's making life or death decisions every, every second and everything you do will have a massive impact on a patient's life. He's 23 years old. Um, he had an RTC and um, he was driving at about 30 miles an hour or less straight down the road and a car pulled out the side road head on into the front of him. The um, gentleman was wearing a seatbelt but unfortunately it pulled out of the anchor and um, he ended up bullseye in the windscreen. Um, he's got cuts to his head. Um, there's one deep one on the left. He's complaining of central neck pain and lower back pain as well. Whenever the description from the ambulance crew that there has been a bullseye to the windscreen, we obviously are worried about a significant injury to the head and to the neck, even to the chest. Have we all got a hold on slide? Ready, steady, slide. The consultant in charge has asked Uzair to conduct the primary survey to assess which of Jake's injuries require immediate attention. Ready, brace, good. Same again on the other side. Ready, steady, brace. Lovely. Perfect. Okay. Hello, sir. I'm going to take good care of you. Do you know where you are? OK, patient is talking and orientated. C-spine is mobilised with a well-fitted collar. 
just relax your arms for me. Clavicles intact. No anterior wall tenderness. No surgical emphysema. No hyperresonance. Everyone in the team is looking at you. You're making that very first initial assessment. Take a deep breath in and out for me. That's good. And again. It does come with a lot of responsibility because I have to get it right and there's only one chance to do that. There appears to be an external hemorrhage on the left side of the head. If I get it wrong, it's the patient's life on the line. So, in summary, decreased air entry on the left side and external hemorrhage on the left head. So what's happening now is going to monitor you and then we're going to have to do a scan. Is that OK? Do you have any questions? OK. Jake will be taken for an urgent CT scan to check for any potentially life-changing injuries whilst his family are informed of the accident. Okay. Just a bit higher. Per perfect. Oh. On my call. Ready, brace, slide. Oh. OK. We're going to scan your um, head and neck and then your body. It's too hot with the door shut, isn't it? <laughs> OK, so you're ready for a little bit of low anaesthetic? Yeah. Uh, 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 I'm mean, aren't I? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Are you asking Siri? Please send me a doctor. <laughs> I need a plastic surgeon. Four-year-old Anya has come to St George's with her mum, Sasha, and nanny, Abby, after cutting her face at home. Anya! Thank goodness, my darling. Uh, yeah, you can do it. Hello, thanks, Tom. Hello, guys. Just pop in here for me. Thank you. There you go. Do you want to sit on there? Yeah. So, what happened with this trampoline today? She jumped off it right into a plant pot. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, dear. Did she cry straight away? Yeah, straight away. Fine. So, so she didn't pass out? No, no. All righty. Now, can I come and join you? Should we take a look at this face? Now, is everybody OK with...? No, I'm just going to stand yeah, this way. That's absolutely fine. OK. I know what my, my limitations are. Yeah, that's very, very sensible. <laughs> oh, now, is that sore, sweetie? Yeah. I had been doing a workout, which was probably the worst thing to do on a... For a 40 degree day. And our lovely nanny he was in the garden with Anya and watching her jumping from the climbing frame onto the trampoline. I went upstairs to get changed. And I heard a scream, and it was a, it was a cry. It wasn't a cry of just a little hurt. And I immediately ran down the stairs. So, we have got quite a deep yes, cut I know, there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't go all the way down to the cartilage, which yeah. I think is what we worry about. Because it's deep and because of the way that it's sitting, I'm actually going to have a chat with our, um, our specialist team, our yes. space team. I think she's going to need some stitches. I grew up um, in a small northern village. Uh, we didn't have much money. We, I, the first time I went on holiday on a plane was when I was 12. So, let me have our chat. I'm going to get with our special fantastic doctor. specialist. Okay. And we'll get that done nice and quickly. Then my first trip when I was 12, school trip to Portugal, I got the, the, the travel bug and uh, decided that that's what I wanted to do as much as I possibly could, see the world. We were the first of our friends to have children. We were very determined that having children wouldn't change us and change our life, so the, the kids come along for the ride. Giggle, giggle. 
Welcome, Guy Kaku Gokin. You've been amazing so far, I must say. Eleven-year-old Jack has a fractured skull and a bleed on his brain after being knocked over by a motorbike on his way to school. Doctors still don't know whether or not the injury to his brain will cause any long-term damage. I guess I am more protective of him because he is an only child, but it's your child, it's your child, and that's it. They are your world, basically. It does all revolve around them. Just sitting there waiting, just, and watching him coming in and out. It's like your pause button's been put on your life. It's horrible. Hi. How's he doing? We just keep a close eye on him. If anything happened, it doesn't take a second and suddenly things change. We would scan his head again and if there was something that needed to be done, he just goes upstairs to theatre. Uh, it's really frightening, isn't yeah, it? And especially then you suddenly... First of all, you have the accident. When it's your child lying on a trolley, I think parents are completely overwhelmed. It's completely alien to anything else they've ever been involved in before. They can't look into the future. They're not thinking about what's going on. All they can see is their son there and then and worrying about exactly what is happening now for this moment, this instant. And that's enough. We've just got to wait. I mean, there's nothing we can there's do now, is there? Can do. No. We've so, just got to wait so 24 it is, hours. It is, just wait. And like I said, he's in the right place if there is anything. And it's a relatively straightforward procedure. Right. Lucky boy. <laughs> All the best, OK. Jack will be taken to intensive care, where specialist doctors will monitor his condition for any signs of long-term brain damage. Initial results of 24-year-old Jake's CT scan show he has a seven-inch wound on his head, but no damage to his brain. Doctors still don't know whether or not he's injured his spine, and he'll need to stay in a neck brace to minimize the risk of any further damage. Do you have any pain at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, so the plan is that what we're going to do is we're waiting for the scan results to come back, uh, and then we can take the collar off. If it's okay. Well, how long do you take the colour off, Jack? I know it's not very comfortable. I think but it's making the... things worse and better. Oh, sorry, but it's going to be done as soon as possible. Okay. So, you can take the oxygen off. I take it your girlfriend was with you at the time? Uh, no. Nah, oh, nah. no. No, I was driving past my ex girlfriend. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> so you're driving to your ex-girlfriend? No, no, no. I just oh. drove past my ex-girlfriend. Okay. Oh, OK. And then the car pulled out. OK. And then I hit the car, and then I just remember waking up on the floor outside the car, covered in claret, with my ex above me. I take it, well, not much chatting was going no, on at the time. No, no, no. So you no. dodged She's a bullet there. Good. I look at medicine as if it's a service industry. So when someone goes away, they'll, they won't comment on how well the doctor read their chest x-ray. However, they do go away and say, oh, that doctor is very nice. So I do try and show my human side. We might be from very different walks of life or being through different situations. I can't completely understand what they're going through, but I can try and relate to them. Is anybody going to see you or? Probably not, no. Probably not, no. no. I usually end up with stitches or breaks or something oh. in my life. Just oh. accident prone. <laughs> what have you had? I've had uh, like broken hands and fingers. 
I've got big slashes on my legs. So just accident prone, yeah, not a. Uh, yeah, so is my brother. So. You're not trying. You're not trying to. No, 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 no. Just, okay. Like like falling over, ends up with about twenty stitches. Oh, just from falling over. When do you reckon they'll be able to set it? Um, it does vary. They'll do it as soon as possible. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, well, let you rest. I'll try anything once, pretty much. I've got to only live with once, Terry and Mom. I'm sort of stuck by it. Like certain situations come up in life where it's your turn to do something. You've, I've got that tattooed on my arm, so I've got to live by it. So I have to do it. It was an holiday. I think my mate of mine was jumping off like, like quite a high cliff into the sea, and I didn't want to do it. Like I don't like heights, but uh, if you have something tattooed on you, and then you don't live by it, you're an idiot, if you ask me. Solomon. Hello. Yo, G. Fucking in hospital. Huh? The KA. I put, I put my head straight through the windscreen, mate. Fell on the floor, bro. I woke up and my ex is above me. I know, bro. It was all like a bad dream, man. Always had my fingers, fingers in a lot of pies, sort of thing. Even at school, I was selling tracksuits or cigarettes or sweets or whatever. I didn't last school, to be honest. I had problems with a lot of teachers and that, telling me what to do. You're not taking your collar off, are you? No. <laughs> what, what, what do you need a hand with? I just wanted to loosen that, but it's all right. We can't loosen it. Then it doesn't do its job. Sorry. Don't take it off. All right, cool. I don't like answering to anyone. Like, I'm a free spirit. I live my own life. Um, take control of what I do when I do it. So which one's Anya, then? Is that you? Excellent. I'm Richard. I'm one of the nose doctors. Specialist surgeons have been called to examine the cut on four-year-old Anya's face after she fell from a trampoline onto a flower pot. And someone told me you had some problem with your nose. Is that right? Do you want to sit forward a bit, sweetie? Oh, dear. So I'm just going to take this little plaster off your face, if that's all right. It's not so bad. After we had our second little boy, we'd still felt that something was missing and we were so desperate for a little girl. So we took a little while and we had to decide whether we would try and have another baby and whether or not it would be okay if we had a third boy. When I found out I was pregnant for the third time, I made the decision that I definitely wanted to find out. We hadn't found out the sex with, with either of the boys. So when we went for the scan, the 20-week scan, a sonographer said it was a girl, and I just burst into tears, and I think I cried all day. It was a happy day. <laughs> You're OK, aren't you? It's not so bad. Because she has two older brothers, they play with her in the same way as they would a, a, a little boy, so she does get thrown around quite a lot. But they both adore their baby sister and are really, really sweet with her. She's quite assertive. Age is not a problem for her. She'll just, if she wants to do something, she just does it. It's a nice, clean, clean cup. Yeah. And um, that means it makes it a little bit more easy to repair, okay. which is good. But obviously, closing it is going to be a, a, a bit of an issue. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, we have a specialist paediatric ear, nose and throat operating list. Right. So we could do it under general anaesthetic tomorrow. Right. 
they're always your children. It doesn't matter how old they are. But when I'm giving them cuddles and lots of kisses, and, I'm sat, and I'll say to them, can, can I still do this when you're 45? <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a second. Okay, thank you. Twenty-four-year-old Jake's final CT scan results show no damage to his neck or spine. Specialist surgeons have been called to stitch the wound on his head. So it looks like it will need a suture. Okay. A suture. Stitch. 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 Yeah. Would you need stitch? Stitch. So it'll numb it. Just numb it. Yeah. You can't sew up that. I do can. Huh? Yeah. Because I think the needles are more than what the sewing does. Depends how brave you are, really. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute, OK? One of the core uh, medical principles is the fact that a patient has autonomy. Let me just put this on note before you go. Which means that they are able to understand the risks of what will happen if they don't follow uh, medical advice. All right, you go to the toilet, it's just out the doors on your right. Okay. Yeah. You have to let them do what they want to do. Got, I hope he hasn't gone. He was a bit fed up. I'd like to say I like to pick and choose my own destiny, but I think I've skipped death enough times in my life now. And I think there's, there's one that's uh, already prearranged because I couldn't get away with so many as I have. Cool, I want to make a move. Okay. Thank you. Um, cheers. Yeah. Happy. Cheers, dude. So, yeah, four's the gone to GICU, actually. There's a student. You just have to remember everybody's different. There we go. Yeah, spotted. I've probably seen thousands of patients with chest pain, but I haven't seen Mr. Smith. He may have exactly the same chest pain, exactly the same ECG, the exactly the same blood test, but he's completely different to the other thousands of chest pains that I've seen. Keep it raised, take regular paracetamol. You have to learn early on that human-to-human -human contact um, has its own little bit of, you know, healing to it. Where do you see yourself in the future? One day, I can definitely see myself as the leader. Can I put it out? Go crazy. I love doing this. <laughs> Adult male trauma, ETA 10 minutes. Question mark? I couldn't see myself doing anything else. But being in charge of the team, being the leader in the emergency department, one day. Like melting on the trampoline. Yeah, the next day, like the wound was still like gushing. Really, I knew I had to go get it sewn up or glued up or whatever. So I went to a local walking centre. Basically, sit there, wait for a bit, and get glued up. Do you have any exciting plans? Nothing, just living life to the full. Is that important to you? Yeah. Why? Because you only get one chance. I think it did cross my mind that 
he could have brain damage, but I couldn't think past the, the here and now. I just had to wait for, for them to tell me what was happening. My mum was really worried about me. I just kind of <laughs> told her, just stop worrying, it's fine. I got a card from my form at my new school. It was signed by everyone in my form and including my form tutor. And I was kind of stunned. I felt like I was gonna cry just like a little bit, but I stayed strong. Put your hand down, you look ridiculous. He said keep it elevated. You didn't say keep it on top of your head. <laughs> Code red, 25 minutes. Code red, that's a patient that's trying to bleed to death. She's fallen 20 foot down a cliff in Hastings. My initial reaction is we have to look inside that child's head very, very quickly and work out what's going on. I believe the neurosurgeon. My other reaction is it isn't just the head.